If you take Tom Brady's career and you cut it in half, I want you to cut Brady's career in half. His first 10 years, three Super Bowls, two MVPs, a regular season MVP, and won over 76% of his games. That is an argument for the greatest quarterback ever. His second 10 years are better than that. Three Super Bowls, two MVPs, regular season, uh, two Super Bowl MVPs, one regular season, two MVPs. He's basically doubled everything against Super Bowl wins. And then he won 79% of his games. You can make an argument that Brady's last 10 years are the greatest quarterback ever. Montana would be the only one you'd argue with him. You can argue that his first 10 years, he's the first or second greatest quarterback ever, only surpassed by himself and Joe Montana. If you take take away Michael Jordan's, one of his three title runs, remember he got three titles, played baseball, came back. He's not even in the discussion. Magic got the nine finals, won five. Russell won 11. We're not talking about Michael Jordan winning three. You cut Jordan's career in half. He's not in the discussion. You literally, Tom has two careers that are arguably better than any quarterback. And the only quarterback that would be in the argument with him is Joe Montana. Four Super Bowls, four MVPs. Like it's not close anymore. Gretzky had Messier, Jordan had Pippen. Brady doesn't have that. Brady's got the most Super Bowl rings in his sport. Jordan's not close. Bill Russell's got almost double. Brady will win the statistical arguments, the playoff statistical arguments. His career cut in half is greater than anybody's. Like it's not close anymore. Like you, you, you sound silly arguing Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, Dan Marino, John Elway. It's like, stop. Like that's like you've had too many Heinekens. Like stop arguing that at a sports bar. Like, go home, call Uber, like get out of here. You're making up stuff. Like, so when I, when, I, when I look at the whole Brady thing and Aaron Rodgers and we're trying, I was sitting there thinking this morning, I'm like, I'm watching him first two weeks and I'm like, I don't, is he close to retirement? If you didn't know what he was, there's a guy on Broadway named Norman Lear. He's 97 years old. He just signed a three-year contract. He's going to work to be 100. He just won another award on Broadway. And they asked him about his age and he goes, I don't really think about it. With Brady's age, we all think about it. If you didn't know Brady's age and you just watched him, you'd be like, oh, he's like 32. He's not, he's not 42. Watch him play. He doesn't look close to it. So all these dominant numbers, minimum, two more years of them? Look, he is the greatest American team athlete. And Gretzky and MJ to me are no longer close. Even Aaron Rodgers admits it. We're looking for outs. We're looking for reasons. We're looking for the hammer. It's not close. It's not even close. He's been doing it really, really well for a really long time. You know, he's, he's certainly in the pantheon of, you know, of great quarterbacks. Yesterday, Aaron Rodgers was on a radio show, and he, he was just sort of laughing at anybody that doubts Brady. And, you know, he was just saying, you know, we we just keep waiting for it to end. And he said, it's just ridiculous. Let's talk about Tom Brady. Do you know in this game, he can reach another milestone. He is three passes, touchdown passes, shy of 500 and joining Brett Favre and Peyton Manning as the three quarterbacks to reach 500 touchdowns. Drew Brees is one touchdown pass right behind him. People don't understand this. In my lifetime, We've always considered the most dominant team sport athletes to be Wayne Gretzky in hockey and Michael Jordan in basketball. It's not close anymore. Brady has lapped Gretzky and he's lapped Michael Jordan. I want you to think about this. Wayne Gretzky, you know, Wayne Gretzky literally has more assists than the second all-time score has points. That doesn't even count Gretzky's goals. But Gretzky, his last 12 years, he never won. And by the way, he never won without Mark Messier. Think about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan never won without Scottie Pippen. 
Brady doesn't have that. Belichick, uh, he was fired in Cleveland and 5-11 and in New England with Drew Bledsoe. The gap between Brady and even Michael Jordan and even Wayne Gretzky is now laughable. Well, well, think about Brady. Brady has six Super Bowl rings. No other player in football has that. Michael Jordan's got six rings. Bill Russell's got 11. Robert Ory's got seven. There's multiple Celtics that have more than Brady. Tom Brady is going to break every playoff record. Michael Jordan doesn't own every playoff record. He's done it with a lot of different players over the years. And as a former player, that's what I marvel at the most. I think when you look at quarterbacks like myself who have won multiple Super Bowls, it's usually with the same group of guys. And for him, it's changed. Their philosophy has changed during that time. And I guess that's expected for a guy who's been in the league as long as he has. But it's truly remarkable. Not only is he playing, but he's playing at a really high level. Tom Brady is going to break every statistical quarterback record. LeBron crushes Michael Jordan in statistical records. He'll beat him in virtually everything, including eventually try points. I mean, we know assists, rebounds, final appearances. You got to remember, Brady's done it with a collection of mostly anonymous offensive linemen, not star running backs, four offensive coordinators, and outside of Randy Moss for two hours, mostly 72 different guys have caught touchdown passes. Magic had Kareem. Gretzky had Messier. Jordan had Pippen. Tom doesn't have any one guy. And obviously, your friend Tom Brady is a big part of that. And, and I hear people use the phrase frequently, not just with him, but with a lot of players, that he creates a culture, that Tom Brady, it, it sets a culture. How would you describe what that actually means? What, what does that look like? How did he come to Tampa and create a culture? I would say the, you know, the, you know, the manner uh, of, of how he carries himself when he steps on the field, the tone that he brings uh, to the team, uh, you know, to the meetings, the tone that he brings uh, out to the practice field. I would say that's where it truly all begins is that, you know, he's not just going out to the practice field to practice. He's going out, you know, to perfect what we got to. Uh, we got uh, on our table, on the table that day, uh, to perfect the plays, uh, to go out there you know, with a purpose. And with the tone that he brings, it just sets the mood uh, for everyone else that, uh, to get better at the same time. You know, what can be said that hasn't already been said about him? It's, it's pretty phenomenal. It makes me wish that this TB12 method was out back when I was playing. I mean, maybe I could have played 19 years or so. It's fascinating to watch that kind of leadership because, you know, he, he seems to be able. We've all seen the, the shots of him, you know, on the sideline. He's yelling at people and he's mad and all that. And he obviously has the kind of relationship with everyone that he can do that. And it's not just that they respect him, but there has to be something beneath that, right? At some point, if someone is just yelling at you a lot, if, if there isn't something more than just respect there, that has to turn into a problem. And it never does. How does that work? How, how do you see that work? Uh, I mean, he's definitely toned down, you know, his yelling and all that, his, uh, his, you know, his mini tantrums, uh, that, you know, that you see every once in a while that was toned down big time this year, for sure. Uh, you know, being in a whole new organization, everything, but, uh, it's all for, you know, you know, for, you know, uh, the general purpose of a bigger cause, you know, uh, to, you know, get his teammates on the right track. Uh, you know, it's not just to yell to just yell. Um, it's to, you know, whenever that happens, uh, it's to yell to get the players motivated or to get you to do the right thing, to get your mind right uh, so you're ready to go the next time you step out on the field or the next drive or whatever it is. It's never to just yell because he wants to yell. There's always a purpose behind it. It's always a purpose to uh, make you better and get you right uh, so you go out there and do it right and, and do uh, the best you can uh, when you hit the field. That's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day, so please like and subscribe. That way you'll always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day. Thanks for watching.